In our last session, we built a complete working GPT model entirely from scratch. It was this beautiful minimal implementation you see right here. Just look at that, so clean. And here's the thing, this code works. It really does. It trains and it generates text. It does everything we told it to do, but it has a secret critical flaw, a big one. And that flaw is that the generation process is painfully inefficient. Why? The reason is a massive amount of redundant computation hidden right inside our self-attention mechanism. You know this formula. <clears throat> it's the core attention formula, right? It's the engine of our entire model. We see it here. Attention of QKV equals softmax of QK transpose over the square root of DK plus our mask M all times V. The bottleneck is this. Every time we generate a single new token, we recalculate the key or K and value or V vectors for every single token that came before it. Think about that for a second. That is incredibly wasteful. We're going to implement the KV cache. It's a simple, elegant optimization that is absolutely fundamental to every modern large language model out there today. This is exactly what we're going to do. No secrets. Okay, look at this. Here's the diff showing the precise changes we will make to our code. I know this might seem cryptic now. You see a few new lines, some changes to the forward pass, but trust me on this. By the end of this video, you are going to understand the purpose of every single added line. You will have implemented the KV cache from scratch, and it will click forever. Let's get started. So where does this inefficiency even come from? Here's the most important thing to understand right up front. The inefficiency, it isn't a bug or a mistake. <clears throat> Not really. It's actually a direct consequence of our simple, stateless design. The problem lies in the interaction between two specific pieces of our code, the generation loop and the attention mechanism. Let's break them down. First up, the generation loop. Its job is really simple. Take a sequence, predict the next token, append it, and then do it all over again. If you look at our simplified generate method here, you can see the whole process. It's a simple for loop that runs for max new tokens. The first critical step is right here. At each step, we pass the entire sequence IDX to the model, not just the new part, all of it. Then for step two, here's the crazy part. After doing all that work on the whole sequence, we only care about the prediction for the very last token. We calculate all these logits and then we just throw most of them away. And finally, steps three and four. We sample a new token based on that single prediction, we append it to our sequence, and we repeat. Back to the top of the loop to do it all over again with a sequence that is now one token longer. Okay, so that's piece number one. Second, we have the attention mechanism itself. Every single time that loop calls the model, this forward method you see here runs completely from scratch. Look at the code. It takes in the input x, it projects the entire input sequence to get q, k, and v, and the key thing to realize is that q, k, and v are recalculated from scratch every single time. It has no memory. So, do you see the problem yet? The loop repeatedly calls the attention mechanism with a sequence that is almost identical to the one before, forcing it to redo almost all of its work. Let's walk through a concrete example to make this crystal clear. Imagine our prompt is just two words, a cat. We want to generate what comes next. Let's trace the waste. Step one, generating the third token. The input to our model is the sequence for a cat. The sequence length, t, is two. Inside the attention mechanism, the key and value vectors get calculated for both tokens. So k is a list with the k vector for a and the k vector for cat. Same for V. Let's say the model does its thing and predicts the next token is sat. Great, the loop then appends it. Our sequence is now a cat sat. Now for step two, generating the fourth token. This is where the waste happens. The input is now the full sequence, a cat sat. The sequence length T is now three. The attention forward method runs completely fresh. It has no memory of what it just did so it calculates the k and v vectors for the entire sequence all over again. 
it computes k-vector for a, k-value for cat, and the new one, kv-controller for sat. Aha! We just recalculated the k-vector for a and the k-vector for cat. We literally just did that one step ago, but our simple stateless function threw them away and did the expensive work all over again. Let's visualize this, because when you see it in a grid, the problem becomes painfully obvious. Okay, check out this table. A check mark means new computation, and the spinning arrow means wasteful recomputation. In step one, generating sat, our sequence length is two. We compute the k and v vectors for a and for cat. All new work, all good. But in step two, when we generate the next token, on, the sequence length is now three. We need the k slash v for on, which is new, but look, we recompute the k slash v for a and for cat. Total waste, and it just gets worse. In step three, we recompute a, cat, and sat. In step four, we recompute a, cat, sat, and on. Do you see this triangle of waste growing? It's expanding. This grid makes the problem just impossible to ignore. At each step, we only truly need to compute the k and v pair for the single newest token. Everything else is redundant work. Let's put numbers to it. To generate the teeth token, we are performing t-1 unnecessary computations for the key vector and another t-1 for the value vector. This is why generation starts fast and gets progressively slower as the sequence gets longer. The complexity is quadratic, big O of t squared, and that is what we are here to fix. So what if, instead of throwing away the key and value vectors after each step, we just saved them? We will save them in a cache. This gives our attention layer what it was missing all along, memory. This leads us to the new efficient workflow. The generation process transforms from that wasteful recompute everything disaster to a much smarter compute only what's new. Here's how it works. One, minimal input. We only pass in the single newest token. That's it. This means the input sequence length t is always one. Two, minimal computation. Because t is one, we only compute q, k, and v for that one new token. Three, retrieve from cache. We pull the past underscore tensors, that's all the previous keys and values, right from our new memory. Four is concatenate. We just append the new k and v vectors to the cached ones. So k full equals concatenate k past and k new. Same for v full, it's that simple. Five, attend. We use our new query, q underscore new, to attend to the full history of keys and values. And finally, step six, update cache. We save the newly expanded k full and v full for the next step. The loop is complete. Let's make this concrete with our example. Imagine we've just processed the prompt a cat. Our cache is now primed. The initial cache, past kv, holds the keys and values for those first two tokens. So k past has the k vector for a and the k vector for cat and vPast has the corresponding v vectors. Our cache is ready. Now, let's generate the third token, which was sat. Step one, minimal input. The model is called with only the token sat. The input idex has a shape of just one by one. Step two, minimal computation. Inside our causal self-attention block, t is equal to one. So we compute just one set of vectors, q nu for sat, k nu for sat, and v nu for sat. Step three, retrieve and concatenate. We grab the past from the cache and stick the present on the end. K packet becomes the K vectors for A, cat, and sat. VFold does the exact same thing. Step four, attend. We use our QNU to query against this full context. And step five, update cache. The new cache now stores the K and V for all three tokens, ready for the next round. Now here's the critical difference. Pay attention. We arrived at the exact same full key and value tensors as before, but we only performed the expensive projection for a single token, that is the entire game. Remember our grid of waste? Let's rebuild it, but this time with our cache. The key insight is simple. The cache stores the previous k and v pairs. Therefore, we only need to compute k and v for the one new token. And what does this mean? It means t equals one at every single step. Let's look at the before picture again, just to remind ourselves of the horror. Without the cache, t keeps growing. To generate sat, t is three. To generate on, t is four. To generate the, t is five. And look at all that recomputation. Those spinning arrows are just wasted cycles, recalculating things we already knew. A growing triangle of waste. Now, let's bring in the cache. Step one, generating sat. The cache already has a and cat. 
We only compute the K and V for the new token, SAT, so T is 1. See the little floppy disk icon? That means we're loading from cache, which is basically instant, and the check mark is our one single new computation. Let's do the next step. Generate on. The cache now has A, cat, and sat. We just load those instantly and do our one new computation for on. And again, T is one. You see the pattern. Step three, generating the. The cache has everything up to on. We load it all and do our one small computation for the. T is still one. The pattern is crystal clear. Without the cache, T equals three, then four, then five. It just keeps growing. With the cache, t equals 1, 1, 1. It's constant. Each step is just one new computation plus a few instant cache loads. The contrast is stunning. The amount of new work, the little check mark in our grid at each step is now constant. One unit of work to generate one new token. It's beautiful. We have successfully transformed the computation from big O of t squared to big O of t. We have slain the beast of quadratic complexity. So what does this look like as a blueprint for our code? The core idea is this. The cache is passed into the attention block, and an updated version is passed out. If you look at this diagram, you can see the flow. In generation step n, the input token and the cache from the previous step go into the attention block. What comes out? The logits for the next token and the newly updated cache for the current step. And that updated cache is then passed directly to the next step, generation step n plus 1. It's a perfect, stateful loop. Let's get our hands dirty. The heart of our change is inside the causal self-attention module. This is where the key and value tensors are born, so it's where they must be cached. We're going to make its forward method stateful. Remember this from the intro? I promised you would understand every single line of this code difference. Well, that moment is now. Okay, here is the complete code diff for the causal self-attention class. Now, I know this looks like a lot, but I promise it's simpler than it appears. The core logic is just a few lines. Let's walk through the key changes. First, look at the forward method's signature. It used to just take x. Now, it takes x and an optional passed in display. That's our cache coming in. Then, you see this new section. This is the core of it all. If passed into filt is not none, we unpack it and then use torch.cat to append the new key and value tensors to the old ones. We're literally just sticking the new information onto the end of the old information. Then there's a small but important change to the masking logic, which we'll get to in a moment. And finally, look at the return statement. We don't just return the output Y anymore. We return Y and the updated cache, which we call present KV. The state comes in and the updated state goes out. Let's break this down. <clears throat> it really is simpler than it looks. To make this crystal clear, let's trace the tensors through a single generation step. Here's our scenario. We're generating the third token for the prompt, a cat. We'll use our tiny model config, a batch size of one, an embedding size of four, and two attention heads. Let's trace the data flow. Okay, step one, entering the forward method. The generate loop calls our new method with two arguments. The input x is for our new token. Let's say it's sat. Notice its shape. The batch size b is one, the sequence length t is 1, and the channels c is 4. t is 1, and we're also passing in past k, the cached keys for the previous two tokens, a cat. Step 2. Calculate q, k, and v for the new token only. Because our input x has a sequence length of 1, this is incredibly fast. The resulting q, the new k, and the new v all have a shape with a sequence length of, you guessed it, 1. Step 3. The caching logic. This is where torch.cat does its magic. We take the past k, which contains the keys for a cat and has a sequence length of 2, and we concatenate it with our new k, which contains the key for sat and has a sequence length of 1. What's the result? The full k now has a shape with a sequence length of 3. It contains the key for a, the key for cat, and the key for sat. We've successfully built the full context with minimal work. Step 4. The attention calculation. Now our single query from sat needs to attend to the full history of a cat sat. The attention matrix at will have a shape of one by two by one by three. This makes perfect sense. It's one query paying attention to three keys. And now for that subtle change to the masking logic. Why did it have to change? Because our query length t is now one, but our key length t underscore total is three. The old slicing logic wouldn't work. The new logic with t total minus t to t total 
correctly grabs just the third row of our full attention mask. This allows our new token, SAT, to see all the history it's supposed to. It's a clever little fix. And finally, step five, the output and the new return value. The rest is standard. We get our final output Y, but crucially, we also return present underscore KV, the updated cache that now contains the key value pairs for the full sequence, a cat sat. This is what gets fed into the very next step. So to summarize this entire data flow, just look at this table. The input X contains info for just sat. The past K cache contains info for a cat. We combine them to create the full K, which contains a cat sat. We then use that to calculate our output Y, and we pass the new bigger cache, present K, onto the next step. It's a beautiful, efficient, stateful loop.